Yes.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. In our prayers today, you will hear the name Lucy Dolly. Many of you know Lucy. She was admitted to the hospital last night. Uh, she had a mini stroke. So we'll keep her in our prayers. Today we light the candle of love. Our theme, our, our gospel text, is Mary's visit to her um, cousin, Elizabeth, her kinswoman. We don't know if she was really a cousin. Uh, her kinswoman, Elizabeth, and Mary responds with the Magnificat. So we'll see what that means for us today. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page three of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Lord of Israel who comes to set us free, the mighty Savior who comes to show mercy, the dawn from on high, who guides us into peace. Amen. Amen. Let us come before God in confession. <coughs> to you, O God, we lift up our souls. You know us through and through. We confess our sins to you. Remember not our sins, Remember us with your steadfast love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Sisters and brothers, come with joy and draw water from the well of salvation. Remember the gift of baptism. Your sin is washed away in the name of Jesus. You belong to Christ. You are anointed to serve. Stand up and raise your heads. The reign of God is near. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you. Share about God's peace by greeting those around you. God's peace. Jan, God's peace. Eileen, God's peace.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Love is the wick that is central to the candle. Love is the wick given by God, the flame that burns continually. Love is the wick given by God that burns in the world. Love is the wick given by God that burns in our hearts. Let us pray. Source of light, Shine in our lives and in your world with your unending love. Through Jesus, in his name Amen. be with you. And also with you. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. In your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs>
first reading from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you are the one you are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth, then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure from now, he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified, and through the offering of the body of Christ, Jesus Christ, once for all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Then when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite the children forward. How many of you have a Christmas tree up? Wow, you all do. That's great. How many of you have presents under that tree? Yes, we even have presents under our tree. I haven't seen any for me yet, though. <laughs> now, just think, if you saw that as a present under your tree, what would you think? Not a very good present, right? <laughs> What's that? At least something came, yes. <laughs> How about if I told you that when God gives gifts, they often come in very plain wrapping? Well, think about that for a while. Here, here, think about the manger. Do you know what a manger is? Jesus was asleep in a manger. You have a set of a manger scene, yes. And the manger is actually a trough or a a holder that holds feed for the animals. Pretty plain when you think of it. And Jesus slept there. So that's a plain wrapping for a very special gift, Jesus. So God gives us, and what did Jesus represent to the world? God's love, okay? So this is a very plain gift, and it's got the greatest gift because it has love okay so today we celebrate love and we celebrate that it came in a very plain gift a very plain wrapping a manger but it was the greatest gift because when Jesus was born God was sending his love okay let's pray repeat after me gracious God we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your gift of love. We thank you for your gift of love. Help us to love. Help us to love. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Back when uh, Rudyard Kipling was one of the most famous uh, writers in the world, he would, he would, uh, it was known that he received ten shillings for every word he wrote, 10 shillings. So some poor college students said, let's get together our resources, our money, and send Rudyard Kipling 10 shillings and ask him to send us the most important word. So they did that, and a letter came back with one word on it, they asked for the most important word, and it had one word on it that simply said, thanks.
Well, the Magnificat that we look at today, and that was what our psalm was today, the Magnificat. Mary responding in great praise to God, great praise and thanks to God, that she, a very lowly handmaid, would be elevated to being the mother of our Lord. And she talked in that psalm about the mighty being brought low and the poor and humble being raised up. It's a, a magnificent psalm that's now called the Magnificat, of course. I'd just like to look at two points w within that. The first is faith. The way our story begins, Mary finds out from an angel that she is going to bear God's Son. Theokotos, telekotos, theotokos was the, the word that theologians back in the third century began to talk, uh, use to refer to Mary. Theotokos, the bearer of God, the mother of God. And um, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, directly behind their house is a Roman Catholic church that used to be called Mary, the mother of God. And they must have gotten some heat from that in the community because after a few years they changed it to Mary, the mother of the church. I don't know if that's an improvement or not, but uh, Roman Catholics have, no, have had no problem understanding Mary's importance. We, on the other hand, we Protestants have a little trouble because Mary is so venerated in the Roman Catholic Church. Interestingly enough, Tuesday's Bible study, Earl mentioned, Earl happens to be reading the Quran, and um, that's Earl Newald. And he mentioned that Mary is mentioned in the Quran. And did you know there's more said about Mary in the Quran there is, than there is in the New Testament? And uh, Mary is spoken very highly of. Uh, she has an entire chapter. Only one of eight people that has an entire chapter named after her. And she's a woman. It's remarkable. So, she's the one to give birth to this holy child, God's Son, the one through whom God would be born into the world. Um, and Elizabeth says to her, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment that was spoken to her by the Lord. Blessed is she who believed. In a sermon on the Magnificat, Martin Luther said, three miracles happened. Three miracles happened when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The first is God became a human being. The second is a virgin, a virgin conceived and the third is, Mary believed. And then he said, of these three, the greatest Christmas miracle was, Mary believed. Mary believed. And regardless of the fact that she was a peasant woman, a lowly peasant woman, she believed that God was truly acting and was going to act through her. That's why Elizabeth called her blessed. So when we think about Christmas and our preparing our hearts for the coming of the Christ child, the gift we should be wishing for, hoping for, praying for, is just that, the gift of faith. Dear God, help me believe. Strengthen my faith. God is able to perform wonders 
right here. Philip Brooks wrote that great Christmas carol, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Mary believed the greatest miracle. We should ask God, strengthen our faith. Second point I'd like to talk about is humility. Americans don't do well with humility. We always want the bigger house, the remodeled kitchen, it seems to be the big thing right now. We always want more. Cars with everything. Why doesn't my car have an out side thermometer or um, sometimes we get the car and we're immediately dissatisfied with it. We don't deal with humility well. Benjamin Witchcoats said, none are so empty as those who are full of themselves. Telling about the difficulty with not being humble. Um, Rick Warren said, humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. James Faust said, the humility of Mary and of any faithful man or woman is just a matter of focusing on God more than yourself. Martin Luther said, be modest and shy about your own works, but when God's promise is concerned, you should have no modesty. The Magnificat calls us out of our smallness and emptiness. It reminds us that God acts, acts in very plain wrappings, a manger, a peasant woman, you and me. Martin Luther put it this way. He said, let me give you two quotes. He said, it reminds us that our skills and possessions are ultimately gifts of God. And then he says, even now to the end of the world, all God's works are such that out of which is nothing worthless, despised, wretched, and dead. He's talking about the works we perform. He's talking that saying they're nothing, worthless, despised, wretched, dead. Martin Luther is pretty hard on us, isn't he? But out of this nothing, God makes that which is something precious, honorable, blessed. We stand before God, offer him nothing, but he takes our nothing and makes something precious, honorable, and blessed. St. Francis always asked the question, who art thou, O Lord, and who am I? Who art thou, O Lord, and who am I? And he received an answer in the Magnificat. And this is what he said. God is the one who made all things and who loves everything he has made. It is not the will of this Father that any should perish, but all should be won back to life. To this end, our God still reminds us of the wondrous event we call Christmas. He understood St. Francis. And he, something he learned from the, the Magnificat, that God created all things and he loves all things. 
and he wishes all to be won back. And St. Francis dedicated his life to being a life of love. We must remember, Mary's statement reminds us that the poor, the poor are precious in God's sight. And it's often when we help the poor, help those less fortunate than ourselves, value them, give them worth, that the most meaning comes to our lives. Natalie Grant, who is a singer, said, she tells a story about Christmas, her most memorable Christmas. It was when she was six years old. Her family was traveling to California, down to San Diego, Southern California, to visit her grandmother for Christmas. And when they were in Northern California, they, they were traveling in an RV. And they, when they were in Northern Cal California, they pulled into an RV park and parked right next to an old RV that had boarded up windows and it had plastic over the door. And Natalie Grant says, her father, who never knew a stranger, went next door to meet their neighbors. And he finds out that there's a young man with his family, his five children, and, they, and, and he's been out of work for five weeks. He lost his job. And he said, in the process, they've lost their home, so now they're living in this uh, trailer. So the father came back to their trailer and he announced to the family, this is going to be your best Christmas ever. He said, let's pack up all the food we have in this trailer. We're bringing it next door. And then he said, all of you kids have so many gifts. I want you each to take one. And we're going to bring it next door and give it to the children next door. And Natalie says, her heart's desire that Christmas was to have something called a real doll. A real doll was a doll that actually took a bottle. And she wanted that real doll so badly. So when she was supposed to take one of her gifts, she took one that she was certain it couldn't contain the real doll. <laughs> so they all get next door and they give this family uh, all their food. And the kids picked a child about their age and gave them their gifts. And Natalie said they all stood there, silent. The family, the other family, just didn't know what to do. And they said, well, open up your gifts. And Natalie said, as that little girl that she gave that box to opened it, she goes, it was the real doll. So she felt a loss on one side, one hand. But on the other hand, when she saw that little girl grab that doll, first go, can I touch it? Is this really mine? And then she took it and held it. And she said, I received such a warm feeling. A warm feeling, she said, I will never forget. And I learned, receiving is, is fine, even great. But the greatest feeling is being a servant. Mary was a humble servant. What we learn from Mary today is faith, humility, humble service. God asks the same of us. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Emmanuel has come, is here, and is coming soon. Let us join in prayer for the church, the earth, and those who are in need that all receive what God promises to give. O oh God, our wisdom, give to all the baptized knowledge of your truth and power of your presence. Inspire worship leaders and church musicians toward ever-deepening praise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, King of nations, bring peace and justice to all the countries of the world. Today we remember all refugees. We pray for those fleeing their homes due to warfare and strife. We pray for refugees from Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Eritrea. We pray for the children from El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, and other Central American countries that flee to the United States. Guide all leaders toward honest and merciful rule. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, Key of David, Look from your throne upon all in need, mend the broken and the brokenhearted, free those imprisoned by anxiety or illness. We pray especially for Odella Arnold, Ken Bohannon, Linda Brashear, Pam Cole, Kelly and Lucy Cowell, Jeff Dykeman, Lucy Dolly, Ron Fells, April Hollinger, Debbie Huff, Dustin Jones, Alan Caymans, Jim Lampy, Richard Law, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Willis Melgren, Adam Miesenbrink, Noah Miller Cox, Shauna Nelson, Steve and Sharon Nervig, Bob Oakry, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, Cindy Plaster, Tom Smith, Kylie Timmerberg, and Ann Wilbur. Are there any others? O oh God, day spring, we remember all who have died and now live in your light. We pray that you comfort the grieving, especially the family and friends of Larry Hopper, of Mel Brooks, and of Florence Stilwell. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, tree of Jesse, nurture our community. Give us joy in one another and make us servants of all in need. Bless our holy day celebrations with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers, merciful God, and make us ready to receive you when you come through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give him thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and jo join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, power and God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. we give you thanks that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives that we may be messengers to prepare your way, harvesters of justice and righteousness, and bearers of your eternal word, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I have a couple of announcements. One is, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, we are going to have what's called a service of the longest night. It's, it's near, isn't it, the 21st, the longest night of the year or the shortest day. Uh, it's also called a blue Christmas service. It's for those that have experienced a loss. Uh, and it's a very nice service. Uh, great music, uh, contemplative, and um, I think you'll, you would find it meaningful. And that's going to be followed by a soup supper, so uh, keep that in mind. Then this week, I have two Bible studies on Tuesday, one at 7 and one at 11 in the morning, and those Bible studies will go on but my Christ Care group on Wednesday morning will not, and Faith and Current Events on Thursday, Christmas Eve, will not. Okay? And then, speaking of Christmas Eve, worship at 5.30, 8, and 11. You can see your messenger for any information. Have I missed anything? Then receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offering healing care all we need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 